following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Very good evening and you are joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a program where we talk about contemporary issues or topics based on the youth per se. Now something which I've noticed is that the younger generation at this moment is falling sick because a lot of young people have high levels of cholesterol, they have high levels of sugar, they have fatigue, stress levels are high and I see like more than the older generation, young people have been paying visits to doctors. But what is the reason? Like doctors advise us to have a, a good diet, the correct nutrition, but how do we do that? And they say exercise is important, sleep is important, but does do the young generation have time for this? So this is a question where constantly people keep thinking about and they really don't have the correct advice on what to follow on this path. So to talk about this as aspect, I have uh, Dr. Dina Sadiq with me, who is a specialized doctor and certified nutritionist and dietitian. She is also a corporate health trainer and a health fitness specialist as well. So thank you, doctor, for taking the time to join me on the show today. And I know that it's a hectic schedule for you also, but I'm glad that somehow we had uh, we could find the time for this as well. Thank you for having <laughs> me, Shanali. It's a pleasure to be here and to be able to speak to our youth. And it's amazing you all have such a specific program for the Gen Z's and uh, yeah, absolutely thrilled to be here. Yes, exactly, Doctor. Like a lot of people are talking about, you know, the older generation, how they're falling sick and all of that. But right now, the young people are at risk uh, for these uh, type of reasons. So the first thing that comes into people's mind are what we are eating. Is it healthy? People say to follow a balanced diet, but do people really know what a balanced diet is and how do they put together a balanced diet? So what is your advice on that? Yeah, that's a very, very important question that a lot of people should be paying attention to. So a balanced diet is something that we have all learned in grade 6, if you remember. Exactly. Yes. Uh, it has to comprise of two main components, which is if you take nutrition, it can be divided into macro and micronutrients. The macros are the big stuff, which is your proteins, carbs and fats. And the micro are the small stuff, which is vitamins and minerals. And let's not forget the fiber and the water as well. Now most of us are not having a balanced diet which is what is leading to a lot of issues today. Yeah. Alright, so when talking about a balanced meal, a lot of people have this question, how do I put together a balanced meal? Now our staple food is also rice and the way our parents cook it, they say no, my mom is putting so much of oil and spices, so how can I eat healthy? You know, what can you advise the young people to follow? First of all, rice is not the enemy. A lot of uh, youngsters that I see, they tend to do it the wrong way by just skipping meals, starving themselves and that also has a lot of side effects. So it is possible to have a balanced meal with the Sri Lankan diet, Shanali. So you can have your rice and curry, you can enjoy a good Sri Lankan old-fashioned meal and stay healthy and fit. So that is what I speak about, that's my area because you don't have to cut out on a Sri Lankan diet. However, the quantity matters, mm -hmm. right? When it comes to the nutrition, I'm looking at the quality, quantity and the timing. Where a lot of people tend to go wrong is the quantity. So rice per se is not the issue, but how much rice are we taking? We are still eating like our ancestors who used to go to the paddy fields. So we are having a little mountain of rice mm -hmm. while we are sitting all day at our offices. So targeting the right portion according to your weight and height and age is something that you can focus on. And that's where it can really help for you to actually go and have a nutrition assessment done mm -hmm. by a qualified nutritionist or dietitian. Uh, another problem that I'm seeing at the moment is uh, like though we talk about uh, balanced diet, 
a lot of people don't follow it mm. because of the said reasons as i said like okay my parents are cooking it this way i'm eating what they're giving mm. so is there a way of like um is there something wrong that we're doing in the way we prepare our meals um to be honest like you take the sri lankan lunch mm -hmm. the rice two or three vegetables and the meat is actually quite a balanced meal right even like later on we will be talking about the plate as well um this is something that you can actually manage like a lot of people who start my nutrition programs they don't need to have a specialized different diet you can mm -hmm. actually continue eating whatever is cooked at home just paying attention to what are some of the portions in which you serve the rice and the curries so mm -hmm. even for those who are living with their parents which is a lot of our youngsters today yeah. they can still manage to maintain a healthy weight by paying attention to the portions of the food the way they serve it mm -hmm. how important is it doctor to maintain a balanced diet because this is not something people willingly follow so it is very important because if you are not for example taking enough protein you are going to have certain deficiencies right mm -hmm. and those deficiencies which means you're not having enough protein or the right amount of fats or vitamins how does that come out in the form of symptoms so we have a lot of people who walk into the clinic with uh, skin issues with hair issues with brittle nails so all this is the manifestation of what you eat so beauty is also an inside out thing the beauty of your skin the beauty of your hair your nails all this is the result of what you eat so you are what you eat and you, the way you look is also dependent on what you eat mm -hmm. and another thing what i've seen the youngsters talk about is oh yeah i am on a diet mm. the so called diet they either skip a meal or they don't eat in the night and they eat really small portions yeah. like some boiled vegetables or something like that so is that healthy because a person needs food to survive as well mm. so at the end of the day they start getting gastritis and mm. other illness illnesses because of their diet mm. so how can you advise on that yeah first of all shanali the what does the word diet mean this part of the world has misunderstood this word we tend to think that a diet is to starve yourself when the truth is a diet is simply what you eat so instead of saying are you dieting we should be saying what is your diet like right so um the answer to your question isn't black and white mm -hmm. but it's more about um are you having the right kind of diet are you having a suitable diet because you should be eating according to your goals if it's somebody who is trying to lose weight they should eat a caloric deficit which means they should be eating and burning it more than they are consuming mm -hmm. so the whole concept of diet again it depends what is working for you will not work for somebody else and as for That's starving right. meals a few years ago in general we were against it but now we have intermittent fasting mm -hmm. a whole other hot topic yeah so if a person is doing intermittent fasting right then they would actually be skipping either breakfast or dinner but it needs to be done right mm -hmm. so if you're in that window period of say 8 hours you can get all your balanced meals proteins carbohydrates fats vitamins minerals water fiber within that 8 hours you need to get it and the rest of the time you're going to be just hydrating yourself right so, so for those who skip breakfast there's actually a solution a few years ago if they went to a dietitian they'll be like no you can't skip breakfast you have to have breakfast it's the most important, important meal of the exactly. day yeah. but that's not true anymore because for some intermittent fasting works out beautifully and for those who don't have breakfast don't feel like having breakfast don't have time for breakfast mm -hmm. they can actually do it properly but very often when i see people coming into the clinic they tend to start their day with a nice milk coffee or a milk tea <laughs> then your intermittent fasting is broken so you have to do it right which is why understanding it can make the huge difference what is the right way of intermittent fasting and you said people like to start off their day with a milk mm. coffee or tea mm. so that's our lifestyle is sri lankan lifestyle they take a nap or a bag you know that kind oh. of lifestyle so you are you saying that it's a wrong way of your diet well when you're intermittent fasting except that window period of eating i mean the classic is 16 to 8 right mm -hmm. which means that you're eating for a period of 8 hours and 16 hours you're fasting during that fasting state you can consume water you can have black tea black coffee green tea all of this without the sugar and milk 
because we are looking at zero calories here. Mm -hmm. So water, black tea, black coffee, green tea are all zero calories. That's fine, right? You can mm -hmm. consume them. But anything when you add calories like sugar and milk breaks your fast. So if you are doing intermittent where you are skipping breakfast, you are absolutely not gaining the b maximum benefits of it if you are having your milk tea and milk coffee. All right. So you should be avoiding that. Uh, as a doctor, uh, what would you advise? Is it better to skip breakfast or dinner? Again, that depends. There is no one answer because a lot of busy individuals who come to me, like those who are working full-time jobs, dinner is the only meal they have together as a family. Mm. So that is a very important part of the family bonding where you're sitting and sharing a meal together. In those cases, I wouldn't suggest them to skip that dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe skip the breakfast and straight away have a brunch and then you can have an early dinner. But in mm -hmm. other cases where some uh, generally tend to either skip their dinner or go on a very light dinner, mm -hmm. in those cases they can actually start off their eating period at an early stage. Alright, so now the next concern is in Sri Lanka we don't have healthy food. That's, that's what uh, people say mm. because they're like uh, medicine infused vegetables and all that. Uh, pesticides are there so people are reluctant even to boil their own vegetables mm. so what advice can you do you do you think that that's the right way to go because for people for young people a healthy meal would be some berries a boiled steak some boiled vegetables maybe a piece of bread mm. that's their diet that's what they call diet mm. so is that healthy is that actually healthy very good question because first of all who says that uh, we don't have healthy food in Sri Lanka we do have a lot of healthy food I mean ideally in an ideal world you want to grow your own vegetables mm -hmm. but sitting here in the heart of Colombo right now most of us don't have time for that we have to make the best out of what we have mm -hmm. right so going in uh, to our Sunday polar and getting your vegetables from an organic uh, option would be good but let's try to make the best of what we do have, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to stick to, as you mentioned, you know, a salad and a piece of steak and a broccoli and yeah. bell peppers. It doesn't have to be like that, which is why that when people uh, visit me, that they are amazed to see that with a Sri Lankan meal plan, it is possible to actually stay in shape. It doesn't have to be fancy diets and a Mediterranean kind of an option. With, with your spicy and delicious Sri Lankan recipes it is possible to maintain a healthy lifestyle and the other question is to maintain this healthy diet mm. it's expensive you is it that's <laughs> what people say like, that's I another know, myth. I can't afford a healthy meal that's another myth so I actually run programs on how to maintain a healthy lifestyle on a budget in Sri Lanka on a mm -hmm. budget in Sri Lanka and that is again a huge misconception because people do spend money on so many other things which are not really as important as their nutrition. For example, people who might be addicted to smoking can become mindful of that and cut down on that. People mm -hmm. who consume alcohol on a regular basis can cut down on that. People who have all these extra accounts, for example, um, some people who are having Netflix accounts that they don't use, these are all things in which you can become aware of all your expenses, cut it down from somewhere and be able to invest that money into your food. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different ways in which you can sit and budget in a way that you can actually have a little bit more investment on your healthy meals. Right. Now when it comes to exercise and keeping fit, like a lot of people attend the gym. Mm. Like, yes, I have a routine to follow, I'm doing that, there's a specific amount of protein which I have to take in and um, sometimes they go for a cheat meal. Mm -hmm. So is that also advice because they say like, oh no, I can't do it without my fast food or mm. my milkshake or something mm. like that. So is that advisable? Do you want good news? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The good news is yes, you can afford to have a cheat meal. I don't even know why we call it cheat meal. We should call it treat meal where you give yourself a treat, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine to have a treat meal or a cheat meal once a week. Uh, whatever you like because the body is such a beautiful uh, creation that actually can you know detoxify whatever junk food that you have mm -hmm. but the question is is this person having it multiple times in the week some people would have one of those cheat meals a day 
Mm -mm. That's when it becomes a problem. But having one of those a week is fine. And also, what are the rest of their meals like? Are they balanced? Are they not? Are they exercising? Are they not? Are mm -hmm. they drinking enough water? Are they sleeping enough? So just the cheat meal isn't the problem. It's what else you're doing around it mm -hmm. that is a question. All right. So we have to continue this discussion. And you mentioned sleep also. That is also a very important topic that we have to talk about. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and I was in discussion with Dr. Deena Sadik who is a specialized doctor and certified nutritionist, dietitian, a corporate health trainer and also a health fitness specialist. Dr. Deena, we were getting into an interesting conversation on cheat meals and you yes. gave us some good news that yes, we can afford cheat meals. And uh, to continue on that, I want to ask about junk food because mm. a lot of people tend to use fast food at this point because they don't have time to cook, they don't have time to pack their lunch from home, they just walk out of their home. So easy way out is just get your Uber Eats or go to McDonald's, drive through, you get, mm. get your fast food and junk food per se. Yeah. And some people can't even, they say that they can't live without their junk food mm. also because it's something that they're addicted to. Mm. So what is your intake on this? This is actually a huge uh, challenge that we face, Shanali, moving forward. Because uh, as we mentioned earlier, having a cheat meal once a week mm -hmm. is one thing. But having it on a daily basis is a problem. And we have done certain studies even in Sri Lanka amongst the youth, even amongst the children. And obesity is on the rise. Obesity is. is definitely on the rise. Um, if, like. Even if you take a look at the 80s, 90s in comparison, obesity is on the rise not only for the adults, mm -hmm. but also for our youth as well. And one of the reasons is the addiction to junk food. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's creating a lot of issues which in turn is going to cause a rise in heart disease, cholesterol, high blood pressure and all these so-called lifestyle diseases mm -hmm. due to these addictions. So it's not just the addiction to the recreational drugs that we see amongst our youth. Being addicted to junk food in itself is an equally concerning addiction, mm -hmm. which we need to work on. Yeah, I feel at the moment like it's something that parents should be concerned about too, mm. because at a very young age, parents tend to give the children what they want. Yes. Oh, my child loves McDonald's, I'll just give it to them. Correct. And then they get used to it. Mm. So what advice can you give for the parents in this aspect? Yeah, parents have to be very mindful because uh, it's even the sugars. Mm -hmm. Let's also t touch on what an addictive drug sugar is, right? From a young age, if the children, their taste buds are used to, this kind of um, very, very synthetic food, processed food, they're eventually going to end up becoming adults who are very unhealthy. And there is a saying that overweight children end up becoming overweight adults. And very often when it comes to overweight children, with the exception of certain genetic diseases, when you take a look at the entire family, as a whole they tend to be overweight and obese because of the lifestyle. And you can't just blame it on genetics. It's more to do with what the family is collectively eating as a lifestyle mm. on a day-to-day -day basis. What do the parents keep in the fridge, for example, to make it accessible to these children? So keeping it at home is the number one challenge and also getting them used to more healthy food and making it interesting, mm -hmm. right? Uh, choose fruit juices over like carbonated juices, right? For a dessert, maybe choose some fruit compared to going for just purely artificial forms of desert mm -hmm. these are some of the things you can do it's a cycle which is very hard to break from if it's inbuilt in their cycle mm. and uh, to break from it it's going to be really hard so when taking baby steps what do you think that parents must keep in mind at this point well one thing is to come up with uh, interesting replacements so right after lunch if you're a, if you're like a family that needs your desert that you need something sweet, mm -hmm. maybe start introducing a little healthier options like a fruit salad. Mm. That would be one option compared to always going for chocolates and sweets and all kinds of other very, very high calorie food. That is one option. And also replace the carbonated juices, carbonated drinks by fruit juices. That's another option as well. 
and also make them accustomed to drinking more water. You'll be surprised to see how some of the youth I have come across say they don't drink plain water. They only drink carbonated drinks. And no water. No water. There's actually people who do not drink plain water. How is that even possible? Like our body it tends possible. to want it. Yes, they, it is possible. That's because from a very young age, they've gotten used to doing that. Yeah. So that's not safe at all. <laughs> not safe, very dangerous for sure, yeah. Uh, talking about, you know, people not drinking water and not having time to make their own meals per se, sleep is mm. also something which is very, very important. important. They say like very rest important. is important. Yeah. But nowadays, where do people have time to rest? You know, I, I see a lot of people know I, I have work after that I have to attend this class, that class. In the night I have webinars, mm. I have trainings. In the morning again, I have, I'm doing two jobs that kind of thing and mm. I barely have time to sleep so now those days in the ancient times people used to have eight to nine hours of sleep mm. and they say that's the minimum amount you need in order to have a healthy sleep uh, routine mm. but right now people don't have eight to nine hours so what can they do for this well what's interesting is Shanali actually um, in the 90s I guess mm -hmm. most of the viewers might not even be born back then in the 90s they used to say that uh, six hours of sleep is good enough mm -hmm. right but now the latest sleep studies research shows that we need seven to nine hours mm -hmm. of sleep right you could be anywhere between seven to nine hours needing sleep um, and back in the days it used to be three circles which were overlapping so your nutrition your exercise and sleep used to all three be equally important mm -hmm. but now this has changed into a pyramid where the base of your pyramid is sleep on top of that is nutrition and only on top of that is your workout fitness so you could be going to the gym you could be working out on beast mode but if you're not getting enough sleep and eating right you're not going to get the results that you want and lack of sleep is one of the reasons of even gaining weight because mm -hmm. when you're not sleeping enough, you're stressed. And when you're stressed, it releases certain hormones which causes the increase of body fat as well. So food so is not the only reason for obesity. Food is not the only reason for obesity. Lack of sleep and added stress is definitely culprits as well. Yeah, that's the question that people have. I don't even eat, but I'm here I am. Mm. I'm fat and obese. Yes. So how can you advise people to like slow down on their routine and take a break and your body needs rest at this time? Well, you said it yourself, slow down, right? <laughs> right? You really need to like schedule time because even the whole idea of uh, having a morning routine, you've heard of morning routines, right? Yeah. But have you heard of an evening routine? Oh no. It's very, it's equally important to have an evening routine, mm -hmm. which means after you've had your dinner until you go to bed, what do you do? Some people would just eat and sleep. Or exactly. Some people might just be on their phone. Phones, yeah. exactly. So it's, it's called falling asleep for a reason. Mm -hmm. You have to let your brain fall asleep. And that's what a lot of people miss out on. So one thing that you can do is get a healthy nighttime routine after dinner. And even again, the dinner timing matters. You don't want it to be like too late. It needs to have at least a gap of two hours right and um, after that is when you start to wind down read a book listen to some soothing music and make sure that the environment that you sleep in is also comfortable and not too stressed and noisy for example don't take your laptop and your work to your bed which is something <laughs> a lot of people do yeah I mean, I'm a victim of that too sometimes yes so that is unhealthy but I've come across people also saying I don't fall asleep that easy so mm. I need my phone I need to watch those reels or go on TikTok for me to forcefully mm. make myself fall asleep so how can a person have a healthy sleep very often the culprit is too much caffeine mm -hmm. and I and I know this as somebody who has had my phases of uh, being addicted to caffeine mm -hmm. because a lot of the youngsters end up in coffee shops um, maybe a little in the evening and, and they have their iced coffee and cappuccino and latte and fr frappuccino and yeah. you <laughs> name it, right? The whole list. So when there's so much caffeine that comes into your system, Shanali, even at 5, 6, 7 p.m., your brain can't sleep. It thinks mm -hmm. that you're buzzing and wide awake. It takes five hours for the brain and the whole system to get rid of half of your caffeine, which is called the half-life. It takes 12 hours to let go of 25% of your coffee, which means if you're taking a coffee at 10 a.m. 
at 10 p.m., one fourth of that is still circulating in your system. Wow, I didn't know that coffee was that strong. <laughs> it is very strong. So one thing is for the youngsters, they need to check on their caffeine. And also, ironically, putting aside your phone mm. can make a difference because when you s stare at the screen, the brain thinks that you're wide awake and it's the daytime. Mm -hmm. So putting your phone away at least one to two hours before bedtime is a way in which you can fall asleep and you know set some light music, some you know instrumental music, meditative music, mm -hmm. dim the lights, make it romantic for yourself <laughs> and try to sleep in an environment that will put you to sleep. Yep, and definitely some people when talking about uh, coffee also, it's not just the morning coffee that they yes. take. I've come across people who take, like for all three meals they need a coffee. Exactly. So, exactly. I don't know how they survive. I'm, exactly. I'm glad that you're giving this advice because some things are actually new to me also. Right. So again, coming back to parents and the young people, because when it comes to really small children, mm -hmm. Parents tend to say, okay, no, after school you have to do your sports, you come back home, you have to study, mm. and then after that you have to spend time with the family also. They also tend to have less sleep because at the end of the day the child is screaming the hell out saying, no, I need some time for myself, also for my video games and mm. so on. So what can you tell the parents on this aspect? Parents need to make sure their kids are getting an average of eight hours and mm. I work with a lot of athletes as well those who are 12-year-olds, um, 15-year-olds who are aiming to get into nationals. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy, especially the swimmers. They start their day at 3.45 a.m., Yes. right? So it's a challenge, but that we work through that. So we would like adjust their meal timings in a way that they can still squeeze in that minimum seven hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. Because especially growing children, even things like their height can be improved if they had better sleep with mm -hmm. their nutrition. So it's absolutely important for kids to make sure, for parents to make sure that their kids are getting enough sleep for their development, even as teenagers. All right. So another factor which is concerning is a lot of young people are not mentally strong. Mm. So does nutrition also have to play a part in this? Because right now I'm coming across a lot of people yeah. just because their teacher scores them or if they get a bad mark in their exams mm. or if their boss scores them if they mess up something they go completely down, their stress levels go high, they go into depression and then after on it's just downfall for them, mm. they can't focus. So does nutrition have to play a role in this as well? Absolutely, I mean um, because the way you feel your mood mm -hmm. to a large extent is decided by what you eat. You know like for example if you're not having a healthy meal then you are, as I said if you're not eating right then your body is stressed. And when you're stressed, it releases a certain hormone called cortisol, mm -hmm. which has several side effects, right? And this can also affect some of the um, sex hormones, like testosterone, estrogen. Mm -hmm. This does have an effect as well. So to answer your question, eating healthy, sleeping, drinking enough water, all of these things work hand in hand. So it's extremely important to make sure that we are having a balanced meal and a lifestyle as a whole in order for us to be able to handle the daily stresses of life as well, even for the youngsters. Like for example, I've come across a lot of seniors and they are laughing at the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Ayo, Kale, we were not like that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. this, the young people are so fragile at this time. Mm -hmm. So what went wrong? What's mm -hmm. the difference between the older generation and younger generation? The question is, has it really gone wrong? because every generation felt that way about their younger generation. This isn't just now, like our grandparents felt our own parents' generation was just useless mm -hmm. and our parents now feel we are useless. And to be honest, there's even a word for it. It's called the golden age syndrome, where people look back at a previous era and think that was better. So this has been going on for centuries. Mm -hmm. Shanali, um, even if you read some of the books written in the 1920s, you will find some of those writers saying, the youth are just not the same. They are not as responsible as we were. So mm -hmm. I really don't think that we should um, make it so difficult for our youngsters because as much as it seems like their life is easier, they also have challenges that the previous generations didn't have. Exactly. Like the challenge of overchoice. <laughs> <laughs> overchoice can cause burnout. It can cause decision fatigue. These are things that the previous generations didn't have to face. So as much as comforts have improved, challenges have also improved.
for example, kids today don't have as much quality time with their parents. No, they don't. As the past, because both parents are busy working and hustling and they're entrepreneurs today. That's like the thing today. So because of that, they are turning to devices. They are turning to junk food. They are turning to company which isn't always very good. They are turning to peer pressure. So they have so many issues and their parents are not there for them, even if, they, if that is the one thing that they would need quality time with both parents not just one parent mm -hmm. that so, is yeah. definitely an important point quality time with your family yes well thank you dr dina we have to move into another short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching gen xyz Welcome back to Gen XYZ and this is our last segment and I was in discussion with Dr. Dina and we are currently at her arena, her workplace at the moment where she meets all her clients also and doctor I couldn't ask you like how you got into this field, you probably would have seen some gap here in Sri Lanka for you to get into this field also. Uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got here. Sure Shanali, it actually started with a personal passion. Um, soon as I had finished medicine, I was uh, studying in Pakistan, came back to Sri Lanka and I was very much in my <laughs> 20s, like all the viewers here are watching as well. And I actually got into just working out, just with absolutely no clue of what it was, what, what gym workouts were, I had no clue. I just started working out and um, got very into it, extremely passionate about it. And after a while, um, years later, long story short, um, after over seven years of that, I went back to Pakistan uh, for my medical training, which was uh, on hold. And in the morning, I was working as a doctor, as an intern. And then in the evening, I had to work out. So I started working out wherever I found space, in the garden, on the roof and everywhere else. <laughs> and then the medical students came and asked me, please, please coach us, teach us. And I said, I don't have time because I'm so busy and then a group of them said why don't you run some group sessions and that was just the beginning uh, that led to boot camps mm -hmm. that went on in several cities and we're talking hundreds of boot camps for medical students and doctors as well and then I moved to Karachi and the same thing happened where in the morning I was lecturing forensic and in the evening I was running fitness boot camps and I asked myself how do I bridge this even for me as an identity, in the morning I was a doctor, in the evening I was a fitness coach and that's when I realized the gap between this is nutrition. Mm -hmm. Because people were confused with what to eat, right? It wasn't just as simple as a Google search because uh, most people didn't know what to do when it came to their specific diet. And for me to be able to help individuals to tailor make it for them, that's when I realized I needed to do this. and. Uh, Coincidentally, one of the best postgraduate programs are at the University of Colombo and I flew right back in and here we are. And we are grateful that you did this course because I feel like a lot of people are inspired by you. Like the fact that people wanted you to train them personally and here you are doing it as a professional career now. So uh, hats off to that doctor. <laughs> Thank you. So now coming back to your training, what uh, do you have any categories that you choose for training people? Do you do it for all age groups? I've seen you do it for corporates also. So when it comes to corporates, do you think how does nutrition affect the productivity of corporates? So tell us about your training. Sure. Aspect. So let's just divide it into two parts. One is the individuals, right? So even when it comes to the individuals, Shanali, I made a decision to help the people who are like the general public because most of the athletes have professional nutritionists and dietitian, mm -hmm. and the very sick patients have them in the hospital. But you have that gap in the middle, which is the everyday common person, the stay at home mom, the busy uh, corporate workers who are always on the rush. They are the ones who get neglected, mm -hmm. which is why that it was very important for me to do a program, especially in Sri Lanka, which will incorporate the Sri Lankan diet as well. So for individuals who uh, walk into the clinic, it all starts with the nutrition assessment. So if you walked in today and you wanted your nutrition assessed, I would start off by taking your full 
24-hour dietary history, as it's called. What exactly did you eat in the last 24 hours? And then, depending on what your goals are, you could want to lose weight. You could want to gain weight. You'll be surprised to see how many people want to healthily gain weight mm -hmm. or maintain it. We will come up with a nutrition plan. And we do have a wide variety of programs. Um, for example, we have a six weeks nutrition program where week by week we will very gradually start changing your diet because you can't do it overnight. Sometimes it's as simple as drinking a little bit of water, going to bed earlier, eating mm -hmm. a little bit more protein. And it's specific, right? Things like this. So it's it very different for each person. And then you also have individuals who come uh, who want to get in shape. So when it comes to weight loss, if you're going on a strict diet, you can just bring down your weight. But it's not going to improve the shape of your physique, mm -hmm. which is where exercise comes into play. So we do have programs which also incorporate nutrition and fitness. We have a seven weeks program. We have a 13 weeks program. And we also have a fitness only program, which is for those who are already following a diet as well. Last but not least, we have the motivation programs, which are very specific. For example, we have had individuals who are addicted to smoking mm -hmm. who want to overcome this addiction. Alcohol who want to overcome this addiction. And also parents really like the motivation program because sometimes the target is to do better for your O-levels or A-levels or for a college exams. Mm -hmm. But while I'm helping them come up with their routine for their exams, I'm also incorporating some healthy habits as well. Okay, yeah. so for example, if a person is going for the 13 week plan, uh, how do you keep in touch with them and how do you know that they're following this routine? Good question. So you have to come into the clinic at least once a week. That's mm -hmm. the minimum. So let's say you're coming on a Sunday. If you're somebody who's busy, you'll come every Sunday. We fix that time every week. So if you're coming at 11 a.m. for the next 13 weeks, I'll be seeing you once a week. And between those sessions, you're going to be sending me pictures of everything you eat. Oh, wow. Such a strict doctor. <laughs> That is great. So and you'll also people be actually giving, do this. Yes, people absolutely do this. You give updates of your, di your fitness as well. So every day with your diet pictures, you'll say fitness done. Uh, you'll tell me the amount of water you drank, the number of hours you slept. I keep getting updates on a daily basis. Wow. That's okay. how customized it is. No slipping away on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when coming back to corporates again, do you show this diet plan? to the corporates as well or do you uh, corporates are a little different this can of course apply to corporates as mm -hmm. well but for corporates generally i have different programs right mm -hmm. like we have around five to six signature programs which is very relevant to the corporates in order to do corporate training mm -hmm. for example how to uh, be healthy and maintain a healthy lifestyle on a budget in sri lanka mm -hmm. then as we spoke earlier about sleep sleep and the productivity how it is affecting for example even something like sales targets are affected by deprived sleep stress management is another program that we do yeah. and also nutrition and fitness uh, the different companies ask for different customized programs for example a few weeks ago i had a program on nutrition and sleep before that it was nutrition plus fitness where i can actually guide the staff on a few simple exercises they can do even at work or during their lunch break well, I think this is a note for their bosses as well to give some time for people to do their exercises as well. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, talking about sleep again, do you think like now power naps, mm. people take power naps. Do they work? They do. Mm -hmm. Power naps are great. But latest research says it's not an hour. It's mm -hmm. 24 to 28 minutes. That's the ideal time. Because if you sleep more than 30 minutes, the brain thinks you're going into your night sleep and your REM cycle goes into that form. I don't want to get like too detailed with these mm -hmm. things. Maybe another <laughs> whole other episode. <laughs> um, but you don't want the brain to think that you're sleeping at night. Mm. So it has to be a quick nap, as you call it, you know. It's like a power nap in order for you to just feel a little fresh and get that rest. They absolutely work, but it needs to be under 28 minutes. Usually, in my personal opinion, when I try to take a power nap, I don't usually fall asleep that easily. Mm. You said 28 minutes is enough, mm. but it takes like 10 minutes for me to just 
fall asleep properly mm. and then it's difficult to wake after another 10 minutes then i'm like i feel fatigue after mm. that I'm like oh i should have slept a little bit longer now i'm just sleepy again yes. Groggy. so what can you advise on that doctor? for that actually there's interesting research to show that you have to time your coffee Mm-hmm. because after you have coffee sometimes in like a few hours you can get sleepy so you need to make sure that you have your coffee and they actually say to have a coffee and go to bed right away mm-hmm. and to have your power nap and that within 30 minutes you will wake up because it takes 30 minutes for the caffeine to kick in and wake oh, you up oh that's an interesting tip yeah okay to yeah. finish off our discussion doctor i want you to advise people because i'm pretty sure like before that what are the common problems that young people come to you about because there have been like some people say yes i want to lose weight losing weight is one mm. very common thing and gaining weight also could be mm. some people come with uh, skin diseases also yes yes i mean we are seated right now at the skin clinic mm-hmm. uh, in lorries road which is literally the oldest clinic skin clinic in the country mm-hmm. i used to come here with my grandparents uh, back in the 90s Uh, when Great. doctor's father the founder of this uh, clinic was there so yes we do see a lot of uh, patients especially youngsters one of the common things shanali we see amongst youngsters is pigmentation mm-hmm. around their neck and that is due to gaining weight and hormonal imbalances so that is one thing that you can definitely reduce or even reverse by getting your weight in order another is hair fall hair fall is becoming so common that uh, it is definitely related to your nutrition amongst the girls we see polycystic ovarian syndrome pcos or pcos which is again due to lifestyle not eating healthy and due to the lack of exercise and even for the young uh, men we are seeing hair fall as well excessively compared to previous generations due to poor diet lack of sleep and lack of water as well yes a lot of people come i've seen people with bald spots and exactly. hair fall exactly young children mm-hmm. also and uh, with their hair also becoming gray at a very young age yes correct so you're saying doctor all of this nutrition has a big role to play absolutely mm-hmm. you are what you eat you look like what you eat beyond a certain point of time just in case like the person couldn't get the right nutrition are there other medicines or vitamins that they they can take externally there are several multivitamins today but multivitamins are never a replacement to whole food mm-hmm. if you are somebody who is trying your best but still not able to for example get enough vitamin d even though we live in tropical sri lanka majority sri lankans are vitamin d deficient except our fishermen and our farmers and those who work outdoors because mm-hmm. we need to get at least 1 hour of sunlight in order to get the sufficient vitamin D that's true once you go into your office like you de- don't know whether it's sunny or rainy exactly exactly <laughs> well so doc- getting the help of the supplements with the food is the best way to go about it mm-hmm. but if not for those who are sometimes bored they are like not living at home those mm-hmm. from out of colombo i've seen who are living just with a fr- bunch of friends they are not even having home cooked meals mm-hmm. please come and meet with a nutritionist or dietitian so that we can assess and see what are the nutrients you need because not everything is for everyone just taking a common multivitamin isn't as good as taking it specifically for example magnesium vitamin d these are things you need to take specifically for you that's right Well doctor unfortunately this is all the time we have I'm pretty sure there are so many other questions and topics that we can discuss about sure. because people need to know this how to live a healthy life and what uh, nutrition that they need for themselves catered to their body itself yes. so doctor thank you so much for sharing your useful you're tips welcome. with us you're welcome Shanali thank you so much and uh, that was our episode on Gen XYZ we will be back again next week with another topic or issue uh, relating to the youth and just in case you couldn't watch us on Yeah, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel youtube.com/adidarna english i'm susan shanali stay safe and have a good night